home, we'd like to welcome you to Cooking Well at Mercy. I'm Executive Chef Christopher Damiani, and today we're going to be Cooking Well at Mercy, and we've invited Karen Kalenda here. She's going to help us out with our nutritional aspects. She's a registered nurse and also a holistic, healthy cooking coach. Very welcome, good. Karen. Thank you so much. All right, today we're going to be working with a special recipe, and it involves gluten-free cooking and vegetables, so lots of vegetables, and we're going to be working with gluten-free pasta. It seems in the past mm, couple of years, something's changed, and that's why we invited Karen here today. Karen, are we different, or is the pasta different? The, the pasta is different? actually different. The wheat is different. In mm -hmm. 1960s, they genetically modified it. They didn't really crossbreed it with anything, but they altered it so that they could make it a shorter wheat that was thicker, so they would have a better yield. And along with that comes a little bit more of the protein, the gluten, and that's what's been causing a lot of problems with people today. Awesome. So, Awesome. You know, I've been hearing about it, and I just don't know all that there is to know about yeah. it, and that's why I asked you here today. All right, today's recipe is a simple recipe. It is spaghetti squash with tomatoes, basil, and pine nuts. We're going to finish it with some Parmesan cheese. We're going to walk you through it like we always do. We're going to give you your mise en place first. Mise en place meaning everything in its place, and from a chef's standpoint, it makes things a lot easier. It makes us go a lot smoother and faster, and that's what we want. So today we're going to walk over, we're going to check out everything we've got ready to go. We've got some Italian sausage, fresh zucchini, fresh red onions. We also have some fantastic gluten-free pasta. It's elbow macaroni we chose today. We've got some heirloom tomatoes. They're awesome heirloom tomatoes because they're golden, they're a nice color. We've got red tomatoes, they're also cherry, but we've got some fresh herbs. And Karen said, Chris, make sure you got fresh herbs today because I'm not coming on the set without them. So we got fresh herbs, we got some beautiful toasted pine nuts, we've got some spaghetti squash, which is rich in nutrients, all wholesome, all natural foods, locally grown, brought to us by our local purveyor. But moreover, we've got garlic, and we've got garlic that has been ground up with olive oil, and we've got Parmesan cheese and salt and pepper. So let's get started today. Let's look more at our technical mise en place. We've got our, I'm in my kitchen, I've got everything organized, I'm about to start cooking. <laughs> Um, let's say it's 5.30 and I gotta get food on the table, but I've decided to go with a healthy meal today. I've got a saute pan. I've got maybe like two more saute pans because we are gonna take this dish and we're gonna make three dishes out of it today. One is gonna be all vegetable, one is gonna have a little Italian sausage in it, and the other one is gonna have a gluten-free pasta. That's right. And that's what it's all about. We're gonna take one simple recipe, we're gonna make three. All right, so. We're gonna open up with some technique here. We're gonna talk about roasting. Roasting is essential. I'm gonna show you some imaginary time-lapse action. We've got these beautiful summer or spaghetti squashes. They come whole in one piece. What we're gonna do is we've got it. I took a knife, I slit it in half, and you get these, this easy to work with squash. I put it face down in a pan. I'm gonna take that pan. I'm gonna put it in my oven for about 25 minutes and when it's done, it's, the skin is gonna change texture completely, and Karen's gonna show you that, and she's also gonna show you how we're gonna get it out of this shell, and that is a hard shell. Karen? First, I just wanna mention that we should be eating more vegetables than what we do, which is why we're introducing the spaghetti squash, and when it's finished cooking, you can just see indentations in the squash. Now, all I'm gonna do, and after it's done cooking, is you take out all the seeds, and you, um, drop the seeds because that's not something that you want to eat and mm -hmm. then you're going to just take a fork and as you can see these strands look just like spaghetti so you just mm. take your fork oh look at how golden yellow this Love is it. this is actually the color of a spaghetti squash while it's growing it's green and then it turns white and then it turns this lovely golden color I'm hungry right look now. at look at this it I looks just gonna, like spaghetti I'm gonna I know today. so I'm we're, gonna you're gonna enjoy faster. this you're gonna enjoy this awesome awesome so let's get back we're gonna fire up our our small pot of water on our little stove top here and if I can do it here on this little burners that we brought from one of the local stores I've got my pan and we talk about the heat it's always medium high heat we like medium high because when it's on high you got to stand by when it's on low you can go today we're on medium high so it's gonna give me a little room to work and some extra time and I won't burn my ingredients we're gonna start out with toasting some pine nuts pine nuts are awesome they are a big part of my diet, not just pine nuts, I should say, but almonds, walnuts, all nuts. I eat a lot of them in my diet, and I'm going to toast them, and Karen's going to talk to you briefly about all the good things that are happening now with the nuts that are available in all the markets. 
Karen, throw them in there, and I'm going to toast them up. Actually, nuts are very good for you. They're one of the better um, fats that you can have, but you need to portion control them. So it's good that you eat a lot of nuts, walnuts, and almonds. I but love them. But to know portion control is nine yeah. almonds is one serving. No. Yes. No, I want a whole it can. It is. Well, then you're going to put some on oh, your head. Oh, I feel it sure. happening. <laughs> Look at that. What color? But pine nuts are really good for you as well. They're a good heart healthy mm -hmm. nuts. And they start to smell when you toast them. They are. They are. And you know, if you do want to do them in the oven, we recommend 350 degrees, about 9 to 10 minutes. Um, try not to get caught up or distracted when you're toasting them. Because by the time you smell them and realize you forgot about them in the oven, they're probably burnt. 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 Very good point. <laughs> okay, so our nuts look good. They're toasted. The aroma's going. I wish I could shoot it through the screen and you could have smell of vision and smell the TV and how wonderful it is. Just can't do it. I'm going to put them aside, reserve them for later in our recipe. All right, set them aside there, Karen. Yep. Thank you. Oh, got some stuck in the pan there. Coming back to me. All right, there we go. All right, so we talked about the heat, our mise en place. We got all our ingredients ready. We're hanging out at the stove. Now is maybe a good time to have a sip of wine um, or something to take the edge off so you're relaxed because you probably can't walk away once we start. So if we had a glass of wine, bon appetit, <laughs> here we go. We're going to start by putting some olive oil in this pan. And the pan is on medium high heat and I will say that over and over again because I want the temperature to be right. I don't want to burn my food. Karen's going to add in extra virgin olive oil just about a tablespoon. She's able to measure that by eye as it spreads out in the pan. I'm going to gently swirl that fat around the pan and that's going to keep things from sticking and it's going to create a nice cooking surface. Now we're going to turn back to our recipe and we've got everything ready to go. Karen's going to start by adding in the onions. The onions. Onions are good, and you know, extra virgin olive oil is a good option too. We want to stay away from canola oils and like vegetable oils. Vegetable oil is what they make margarine out of, it has a lot of trans fat, so we don't want that. But the canola oil, that has been processed, um, and that's been processed with chemicals. So we kind of want to avoid that too, but extra virgin uh, olive oil. Know. And, um, you know, the way they make olive oil is they take the olive yeah. and they press it and it's the olive oil that comes out. So that's why it's more healthier and heart healthier for you as well. Awesome. Bring me the zucchini. More, more vegetables. Zucchini is good and we took the seeds the out of here there, so baby. no one's oh. going to burp today. Burping. I was All thinking right. something else, but that's good. We took the seeds out, easily digested. We're going to add our garlic in here now. The garlic is fresh garlic. Um, and we're going to add a lot of garlic because garlic adds the flavor and it Love keeps garlic. you healthy, it keeps your blood going. Yes, it does. It's right? good for your heart as well. It's an antibacterial Excellent. as well for your intestines. So it's All right, very so now good. we're also going to put our pine nuts in here that we toasted. More food. I love it. Oh, that smells good. All right, and now I'm using a basic cooking technique that we teach a lot of our younger chefs. Uh, when they're working stove top, and what we're doing is jumping without using any utensils. We're just knocking it back. We let the, pro the vegetables get to the back of the pan, and then I'm gently going to pull backwards and throw that up in the air. And you can see that everything's mixing up very nice. I'm going to give it a little bit more of a stir, and then we're going to use a liquid to deglaze this. Deglazing is very important to bring the flavors together to make this dish a dish that you're going to remember. Okay, a lot of times I'd recommend wine. I'd always add white wine. Yes, that's white wine what you for add. a vegetable dish. <laughs> yeah. But today we're going to use just a touch of water, um, just to bring up those flavors. I think I got maybe a quarter cup of water. You can see it steam off. It's going to grab all those flavors from the sides of the pan. I'm going to gently swirl it around again and bring up all those flavors. I've, I've extracted them now from the vegetables. I've got my pine nuts, my garlic. Oh, that's good. And now that's we're going to add our spaghetti squash in. Spaghetti squash is a strong vegetable because it's able to withstand the beating that I'm going to lay into it on this pan. It's going to stay together like spaghetti. So I'm going to be able to, to be pretty aggressive with this stuff. I can use a tongs, I can use a fork, whatever I want. I'm just going to spread it around and then I'm going to jump it again. I'm going to throw it up and down in the pan. I'm going to lay into it with all I got as a chef. I'm gonna get rough. Karen's gonna back up because I don't want to splash her. All right, Can you I'm smell just the garlic? In. Smell the garlic and all the onions. Right. Beautiful. Yeah. And look at that. So now it's all combined. 
And now we're gonna bring more color. So we've got our garlic, our onions, we have our zucchini, our squash, which is spaghetti squash. And now we're gonna add our colorful tomatoes. Add them in. And the Beautiful. tomatoes are great. Tomatoes have lycopene, which Beautiful. helps us keep cancer away. So lycopene. Lycopene. Is that coming a multi-day vitamin <laughs> or do I gotta go out and cook? No, you gotta cook. Healthy I gotta vegetables. Cook. It's the whole idea here. So I can't go out and get a multivitamin. No, right? you need to eat healthy first before can't you cheat. supplement. Yeah. So I got olive oil, I got veggies. That looks awesome. I got spaghetti squash, pine nuts. Do I really need to add meat to this or could I, would I be okay no, with this No, this is like a this? good vegetarian meal right here. Yep. It's got a rainbow of colors and mm -hmm. it's going to be delicious just the way that it is. But we are going to do some um, gluten-free pasta. We're going to add that to it and then we're going to also add some sausage. So we've got three meals. Wow, you're making me work hard today. I like it. You know, right, you so only have 30 minutes to eat, right? When you get home from it, work. So, it. so we call like it the hurricane hour. Hurricane hour. Uh, and right now, I'm going to finish the first dish and let Karen put the excitement to it. So all I'm gonna do is take a nice portion. Uh, we always recommend a portion size. I think eight ounces is probably enough. Um, we don't want you too full, because then you won't be able to have dessert. And you might, can we have dessert? Are we, are we, are we nutritionally, can we um, have it? Yeah, fruit. <laughs> fruit? <laughs> Fruit's a wonderful right. dessert. <laughs> She's gonna finish that. The recipe calls for it to be finished with Parmesan, Parmesan cheese, cheese, fresh, basil and she's going to garnish that up with maybe a few more tomatoes a little bit more color to really make it grab you when you when it gets served to you and we're going to set this aside so we've got our our base dish is ready so we're going to start by putting a little sausage in the next pan karen's going to add it in it's a mild italian sausage and this is the meat part i love meats in my foods i feel good when i'm having meat most men do i, I can't explain it <laughs> Um, but we've got some sausage here. It's a mild sausage. We're going to brown it up gently and we're going to fold this together and we're going to use the same dish that we have here to make another dish. And we're using sausage, but you can feel free to use chicken or you could even yep. use, um, yep. you know, beef if you want. It would be like just it. as good. Yeah. I like it. And I'm swirling, I'm jumping, I'm using basic cooking techniques and I've only used one burner so far. But don't forget, I had to roast in my oven. I did a little toasting. So we looked at roasting the squash we toasted the pine nuts right now we're doing saute we're browning out the sausage you can use any sausage you want we just happen to be using a mild italian sausage it is oktoberfest coming on and we could use bratwurst yes you could use bratwurst, bratwurst. absolutely um, any other meats you'd recommend in this dish just you know chicken or, or beef would be good could yeah. i use ground beef yes you could use ground i beef. could use ground absolutely. beef absolutely yeah steak Steak, yes. Steak, yes. lamb, yes. lamb, lamb. Excellent. All right, Whatever. so we got heat there. We're gonna make. We're gonna finish our dish. This is our meat option. Add it all together. Now remember, we used one full spaghetti squash to get this. All right. Once again, we got some heat going. It looks good. I'm gonna gently toss. And we are almost there. Oh boy. I'm going to use a little bit more water, just a touch to bring it around, to loosen it up. Uh, I wouldn't recommend adding any wine at this point because you wouldn't be able to cook out the alcohol. And you'd be serving some alcohol, possibly to some younger adults. And in New York State, you know, I, I think that's against the law. The last I saw. Yes, it is. All right. <laughs> so this is done. It looks great. That We're going to plate it up. I'm going to turn once again to Karen. She's going to finish it off. I'm just going to lay it on the plate real nice. And she's going to bring it to life with a little more love. Karen, there you are. A little more Parmesan cheese and a little more Parmesan of the basil. Cheese. And I'm actually going to put some more pine nuts too because those mm. are really good. All right. Everyone's there we gonna are. Love this. Adding a little of our gluten-free pasta. And one of the things I'm going to have Karen, just expand on real quick, is the gluten. Yeah, well, I talked about the wheat before, so mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why we're offering the spaghetti squash, because it's a great alternative to white flour, white pasta, you know, white rice. We don't want to eat that, because that's like eating a bowl full of sugar. And we want to stay low glycemic, we want to stay low gluten, we want to keep low cholesterol, yep. we want to keep ourselves healthy. 
So this is a, um, a gluten-free pasta, and then we have quinoa pasta, which people may not know is a seed. It's an ancient seed from Inca, from the Incas, and actually it has nine of the essential amino acids in it, and those are the things that we cannot produce ourselves. So it's a complete protein. So you really want to get some of that and try that. It's very right. healthy for you. And, right, you know, I Chris, I just want to mention, too, like, if you think you have a gluten problem, mm -hmm. that you should really do an elimination diet. And um, do it for two weeks, and then add the wheat back in. And if you're insensitive to it or intolerant to it, you will certainly know right away with bloating and gas and all those really? kind of things we don't like to talk about. But celiac disease is on the rise, irritable bowel so syndrome. So people how, have Would I have stomach things. cramps? You would have stomach cramps, yes, you would. Would I vomit? Absolutely. No, you won't vomit. I won't vomit, but I'd be cramped cramps. over. All yes. right. <laughs> so I want you to give me some more basil in here. Yep. Throw some basil in there. Let's add a little more salt and pepper. And it looks great. I'm well, excited. I put a lot of basil in there because that's good. A little bit of salt, a little over the shoulder, remember? All right. And All right, a little bit of pepper. Stir it in there. And we switch pans and we switch to a sautois, which has got high sides, keeping the ingredients hopefully it. in the no. pan. We're going to stir it up and we're going to plate it up. And oh boy, I like it. I like it a lot. Very, very nutritious, very simple. How long did it take us? Maybe 10, 12 I minutes to, yeah, exactly. to knock out three different dishes. Exactly. So one of the things as a chef I will point out is you could make the base recipe a day ahead. And then when you get home, you could add your pasta to it or your meat and finish off with a nice simple meal, really cutting your cooking time in half with your guests or your children or your loved one. We've got three beautiful dishes. We'd like to thank everybody at Mercy Hospital for making this event possible, especially Karen for coming today and helping me along and learning more about the things and foods that I don't see that are happening inside my body. Bon appetit, everybody, thank you and so enjoy much. your day.